What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. So in today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different today, and we're going to take a first look and kind of a review of the Lockheed Electra 10A. So this is brought to us by Airplane Heaven, and if anybody is contemplating this purchase, then you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Alright, so welcome back to the simulator, and we are taking a look at this beautiful Airplane Heaven produced Electra 10A. So if you were contemplating on this purchase, well, this video is probably going to be right up your alley. So we're just going to take a quick roundabout view of this here airplane, and then we're going to hop on the inside, take a look at the controls, and also uh, some of the camera angles. Then we're going to show you how to fix some of those camera angles, because you'll see just why in a minute. Let's get a little bit closer look at the rear landing gear here. That looks to be modeled fairly well. I do see some texturing issues, and I must say, for a $31 add-on, I would have hoped that these textures would have been just a little bit better on this plane. Let's zoom in here on the engines, and let's see what they look like. Compared to the Junkers uh, 52 that came out, or the Junkers 52, however you want to pronounce it, the engines on that plane look much better detailed than it does on this here plane. The other thing with the Electra A10, they do offer, I believe, 11 different liveries and the blank livery, so for all of you SDK developers, I think they've, uh, they're asking for some help here. I don't know, I'm just saying. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in the back side and walk through the cabin of the Electra A-10. Uh, it's modeled very well. You even have all your curtains here. The seating looks wonderful. Hey, and there's even a little teddy bear down there on the floor that somebody forgot. So it doesn't look too bad, but again, for a $30 add-on, well... I would have hoped that this door here would have at least opened, but that doesn't. The cool thing is, it does have a see-through glass. That, that's pretty neat. So the first thing you're going to notice when you get inside this cockpit is the really weird camera view here. And the camera view, in my opinion, is way, way, way too high. So the first thing that I would do, if I were you, is to fix that camera view. And all you need to do is hit the escape key, go up to general options, go to camera and then turn the height down, maybe around there. Then you can go back and, yeah, that, that kind of looks a little bit better. And then you can use your increase cockpit height button to uh, look over top. Now let's go ahead and take a look from left to right in here. And I was really hoping for, just like in the DC-6, that these windows would open, but... They didn't offer any openable... Is that a word? Openable? I don't know. I'm sure somebody will tell me down below. But they don't give you any windows that can open. And not to mention, there's a huge tear right down the center of this window. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a broken glass or what. I don't know. Or somebody just had a whoopsie. Now, we take a look at the interior here. It looks pretty well modeled. I mean, everything looks alright. Some of the textures here look a little weird around the autopilot, or I should say the gyro pilot that is in this plane. But, the seats look pretty nice and comfy. But now here, look at this. Now if you look at this seat, look at the sharp edges, and it looks like it's only about an inch thick here. I don't know, I'm trying to nitpick this thing, because it is a $31 add-on, so these things may or may not matter to you. Now, these levers down here, they don't function, they don't work. Um, but to get rid of these yokes right here, they do give you two buttons here. So if you hit this and hit that one, that will get rid of your co-pilot and pilot yokes, which does make it nice. 
Now the next thing that I noticed here was that they put a cool little flap indicator here. The problem is, it doesn't work. So when you lower your flaps, and I think it's a little weird that it's just a little... Your flap lever is a little toggle switch here that moves very slowly up and down. Here, let's show you. See it moving? Which is kind of weird. But the other thing is, like I said, this flap indicator doesn't even work, so you have no idea where your flaps are positioned. So that's kind of weird. The other thing, right over here on the left, they give you a couple different switches so you can operate and open and close the rear door. So let's go take a look outside. And you can see that rear door is open for the cabin area. Then over here, there's a vibration monitor. I'm not sure what in the world that does. I think that's something to do with the camera. I don't know. Then right over next to that, this is how you turn on or off your vintage avionics. So if you hit that button, it will bring up your new avionics suite, which is, I believe, the GX touchscreen unit avionics suite. Honestly, it's not that great. I would have loved to have seen a G1000 in here or even a 530 put over here or something like that. But it really... I don't know. And when we actually take this thing up in air, you're going to see that the airspeed on this is wrong compared to the airspeed that the airplane's showing us on the steam gauges. So, I don't know, maybe that's a bug. I would have hoped to have had at least corresponding airspeed indicators. So, if we look from left to right, there's some panel lights here that you can turn on. Now, the one thing is when you start using these lights, they're already in the on position. So, let me show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and turn on some battery. So your light switch is right here. Uh, there's nothing on it that really tells you, so you kind of either have to know where it is or turn your cockpit indicators on. So if you hit that glare shield, see it, it coming on full blast. To turn it down, you can just go ahead and turn this knob right here up and down. Over here, it's kind of the same way. If, once you start moving this switch, the lights come on full blast. You have to then turn it down, and also the same with your panel lights. You have to then manually turn them all the way down as well. So I kind of didn't like that feature that they come on full blast. I, I would have liked to have seen them at least maybe midway, not completely full blown, so it doesn't blind you, especially if you're turning them on at night. But uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and turn the glare shield off. All of your light switches are right here. Now above that we have the landing gear indicator. And it also has a gear pump switch. You can turn it on or off, but it doesn't actually do anything. So you can still operate your landing gear right from this switch up and down. And that pump switch doesn't effectively do anything but make some noise. Unless somebody else can tell me otherwise, but... I haven't seen any difference. So let's move over here and take a look at the radios. Now, I noticed that if you come on top, these dials here on the comm unit, they don't work. Auto does work, so the send and receive auto button does work. If you hit the comm 1 button, it just kind of reverts right back. Same thing with the comm 2. Now, nav 1 and 2 will turn on. This way, if you want to listen to your Morse code for your nav frequencies, I'm Hopefully that's, that does work. I haven't tested that in it or not. Now we come down here to the transponder. One of the first things I noticed here is that the little line that indicates where it's actually pointing to is off. So right now if I try to turn it to the left, it just rebounds right back to there. And then if I turn it to the right, as you can see, it will move to the right. So... So it looks like there's only three. So standby, on, and alt. And again, if we move this to the right, one click, so that would be standby, on, and altitude. So that's one of the things I noticed here that on the transponder, the indicator is a little off. These seem to work okay. And let's look at the ADF here. So we turn that on. Okay, so the indicator on the ADF is functioning properly and looks like the volume is working okay so I think that'll be good if you want to use uh, an ADF or an NDB or something like that and then of course your radio is up top here All right so it looks like if you push in on this knob here this is just gonna swap frequencies 
And... Hmm. I'm trying to adjust the volume here, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So as you see, it's got the cursor there to adjust the volume, but it really doesn't do anything. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look over here on the right-hand side. Looks like we have some oil, fuel, and temperature gauge for both engines. Engine 1 and 2 have a climb indicator here. Altitude over here, a clock, slip indicator. So... Oh, and then here we have your avionics lighting, uh, which is right here. So that does turn on and off all your avionics lights. That works. Oh, right down here, they also have a tail wheel lock. So if you do lock that wheel, it does work. So you have to make sure you're in the released mode. Now on the inside of the cockpit, it does offer you two different setups. So you can start either in a cold and dark or you can start in a ready to start mode cold and dark if you go ahead and hit that button right there it puts everything in a cold and dark and if you want to get ready to go if you hit this button right here it turns everything pretty much so you're ready to start we're not going to do that today so let's go back to the cold and dark and let's pop our heads up top here and take a look at the upper panel so it looks like we have two fire switches they open but nothing happens to the switches so i guess they're just there they may operate in the future who knows uh, looks like the auxiliary switch, that doesn't work, but your left and right switches do. You have your primer and the starter. Now, in the real plane, when you would go to start this thing, you would actually take two fingers at the same time and hold these over. But, because it's a simulator, we have to kind of do it with the mouse. Then, right over here, we have, I believe this is oil temperature and oil pressure. So, right on the bottom here, there's a switch here. So if you switch that switch, it will then correspond to what you're trying to look at up top here. Same goes for the amp and volt uh, gauges here. There's a little switch here that you can switch between amps and volts. The prop feather button, apparently, supposedly this doesn't work if you hit the prop feather button. But I found that if you do hit it, then your prop lever knob disappears. So I don't know what that's all about. And then you can't pull out the switch to reset it so i don't know how you're supposed to do that other than resetting the whole simulator so i don't know things are a little bit weird but so let's say we get this thing up in the air now after we kind of nitpicked everything in the cockpit and see at least how it flies and uh see what you guys think by the way, if you have any questions, go ahead and post those down below. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, while you're down there, hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. Because you don't want to miss any future videos on the channel. Alright, so let's go ahead and get some power to the unit. Uh, I'm going to use my Bravo Throttle Quadrant here and get our batteries and alternators on. Then we're going to put the prop in full forward and the mixture full rich. Down here, we have our fuel indicator, so we go ahead and turn on one and two. I'm gonna go also turn on the left and right fuel shutoffs. This is for the carb heat down here. We're not gonna be using that today. And let's just make sure the brakes are on. Let's hop up top side here. These are our magneto switches, so you're gonna you need to pop both of those in the both position. Then the center switch here, you're gonna push in on your magneto ignition switch. We are almost ready. So we're gonna start the left engine first. Also, we need to crack that throttle just a bit. Next thing we need to do is hit that booster pump prime and hit the starter. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. We have the left engine start. Turn off that booster pump. We can go full rich on the right engine, crack the throttle, full forward on the propeller. Booster pump on on the right side. Hit the right primer and the right start. There we go. Now, as you can hear, the engines are very, very loud in this plane. And if we go outside, 
remains quieter on the outside than it does on the inside of the plane. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's go ahead and close that rear door. Hit the escape button, general options, and go down to sound and turn aircraft engine. Let's put them on three and see what it sounds like. There we go. All right, so that's how you're going to have to fix your aircraft engine noise is to turn it all the way down to pretty much nothing so that uh, you can at least hear yourself speak. Oh, and by the way, if you take a look up top here, this is also your elevator trim and your rudder trim is right here. I think that is pretty cool. They actually have it modeled here with the little ropes that go down and probably is what controls everything. Let's say we get this thing up in the air and just do a quick little roundabout flight here. Let's make sure the wheel lock is released. Brakes are off. Oh, and right up top here, this is your Nav 1 and Nav 2. So if you want to change between your Nav 1 and Nav 2, this would be your OBS style, your CDI. Uh, so if you're going to be following a VOR or an ILS or something like that, you can use that. Now, once we get up in the air, take note at this airspeed indicator compared to the airspeed indicator on the plane. If anybody knows why that's off or it's just a bug, then let me know. Flaps on this plane actually come out from underneath. I think that is pretty cool. It's kind of like the, uh, I think that's the VL3 does that. So we're just going to do a quick rough and dirty takeoff here, nothing special. And I know I'm going way too fast than you normally would to get on the runway. Okay. Now the next thing with this plane, uh, if you go up to, I guess the fuel menu and take a look at what's inside of it, the payload is pretty low. And I will say that it kind of just wants to float off the runway if you leave the payload set where it is. So I'm going to set the payload up to 55% and this will kind of help us on our takeoff. Just going to push those throttle handles forward. Now mind the rudder because when that tail comes off the ground, woo, things starts going all over the place. There it is, all over the place. And we're just going to pull up. We are off. Now, if I put up the gear right there and we look outside, so that switch down here did absolutely nothing for us. Oh, by the way, I forgot any and all of my switches here. So actually, they turn all your switches on by default. I think that's kind of weird. All of your light switches should be turned off, especially if you start in a cold and dark by default. They start you with all of them on, so that's... I don't know, I think that's kind of weird. Now the trim wheel is very touchy on this thing. A little bit of change here really throws you off a little bit. Okay. So let's take a look at the airspeed indicator here. We're at 102, and if we take a look at this airspeed indicator, we're over 110. So it doesn't really make any sense to me at all with this airspeed indication. Again, if anybody else has any other thoughts, let me know. Let me know. I really wish they would have allowed these windows to open. I don't know. Oh, yeah, but you can see through the back, so I think this is pretty cool. This is model really neat. I would have liked to have seen the door open, but, uh, I don't know, for $31, I would expect a little bit more. Again, and I'm just comparing this to the Junkers that just came out, because that's modeled very, very nicely for, what, 14 bucks. And then I'm also comparing it to the DC-6, which is, what, $90? $80, something like that. So, all right, so let's start our turn in. Now, this plane also doesn't like to uh, decrease speed very quickly, so you got to kind of plan for that ahead of time. 
Alright, there's where we're going. I'm going to bring back throttles a lot here. Now, approach on this airplane, around 80 knots or so, which is pretty slow. I mean, I've even had it come down to 70, 65, 70 knots. I mean, it's, it's almost like flying a Cessna. All right, let's get some gear down and one stage of flaps. And I pulled all the throttle out. Props are full forward. All the throttles pulled. And let's see how this thing does on landing. I will say that it is very, very responsive with the yoke. See, like, I mean, I think that really whips this plane around. I, I don't, I don't know if that's real or not, but anyway, we'll let you decide on that. As you can see, I mean, our airspeed is still pretty high, no throttle in it, and I've got about two stages of flaps down already. We're gonna put another stage of flaps. Now, if we look over here on the flap indicator, nothing. Why even put it there? I don't. I don't. Just don't get it. And the thing is, if you come in too fast with this plane, it will not want to land on the runway. I mean, you really have to be coming in at under 85 knots, 90 knots. Any faster, it's really just going to float you on the runway. Now we're going to add a little bit of throttle here because we don't want to drop below 80 knots right now. And let's go ahead and go full down on our flaps. That'll just help make the plane a little bit more stable as we get slower because once you get under 80 knots, the plane does kind of want to flutter a little bit all over the place. So. also have an airspeed indicator up here as you can see we're just about 80 knots and I've got hardly any throttle to keep us there with full flaps and loaded almost completely up so I don't know if that's real or not but I must say that these engines are really powerful for this plane if that's true I don't know Let's see if we can nail this one. Alright, so we're just about over the threshold. Let's pull back the throttles all the way. Let's bleed off some speed. And... That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. If you'd like to see anything else on this plane, go ahead and uh, put that down there as well. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe, take that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. I can't wait to see you next time. To all my flight simmers out there, keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.